Good evening, ladies. How are you guys doing? We're good. <laughs> How are you? I'm still sick, but I'm holding on. <laughs> yeah, you better shake that. I know. Right. I know. It's trying. It's trying to hold me, but I'm giving it the shake. The full moon is Sunday, so. Maybe that's when it'll go away, and then I'll be able to be myself again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's welcome everybody back to another episode of Whiskey, Wine, and Moonshine. Um, this is our, I guess, side show that we do where we review American Horror Story Coven. Um, so we are on episode six now, but before we get started, do you ladies have any beverages that you all are sipping on? I am sipping on the finest, I think it's Welch's grape juice that <laughs> the grocery store had to offer. <laughs> Um, I just finished a green smoothie and mm. uh, I'm just drinking my water my trusty uh, water tonight that's it uh oh we're going to be very tame I forgot to introduce ourselves I'm, I'm one of the co-hosts oh, Sojo and I'm joined by Lady Buddha and Miss Smart and they are healthy and so am I because I am sipping on Simply Orange Juice so <laughs> <laughs> We might have a pretty tame show tonight. Um, do we want to just hop right on into the episode? Yeah, let's yeah. go for it. Let's uh, right. make it happen. <laughs> what were you all's overall thoughts? Um, it, there, and I think I tweeted this. They're just adding so many characters. It's just like uh, it's it's. They're trying to do so so much, just so much. But it, this one did at least hold my attention. What about you, Lady Buddha? Um, you know, this one actually had some elements of horror. Like, I was actually, you know, a little scared, a little tense on the edge of my seat a couple of times. Um, and not because of something they tried to gross me out doing. So that was interesting to experience. I was like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. is this what, this reminds me of Amityville Horror or Poltergeist or something that actually is horrible. So... That was exciting. But um, this is another writer. So we still have not had a repeat writer yet for an episode. This is yet right. another writer. We so. keep getting all these brand new ideas. And I agree. This was the, um, I think the first episode was my favorite. And then I think this is going to be my fa my second favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with you that they were going with more uh, horror as opposed to gore. Um and I think that's because just like in the first episode where we were introduced to Madame LaLaurie's character being a true story, the Axe Man is also an actual character, mm -hmm. uh, an actual real life, you know, person from New Orleans. So I guess having to draw on fact as opposed to fiction made it less, I don't know, less, less cheesy. Um, when we open up the scene, we're in 1919, and we see the character, the Axe Man, and he's reading a letter. And this was an actual letter that he sent to the papers back in New Orleans. Mm. Back then. He was a serial killer. Mm -hmm. um, and so the letter that he was reading was one that he actually sent to the papers, and he was basically saying that he wanted every house to play jazz. He called it literally jazzing it up, or he would kill that night. And so legend has it that every house did actually play jazz music. They hired jazz bands. You know, the whole city um, that night was alive with the sound of jazz, and no one was killed that night. So, you know, that's the truth of, of it all. But then back, you know, to the <laughs> story. Why are you laughing? Oh. <laughs> you, you didn't see yeah, the question. You already got up. a comment and a question and answer. Oh, anyway. what's, what's the question? Hold on. I, I don't have the Q&A thing. What? Well, keep going because it hasn't come up yet. But yeah, yeah. keep going. Yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll answer that later. <laughs> that one, yeah, yeah, I see that one. Yeah. Hold on, Michelle. We're gonna get to that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we get back to the school and we see a, the new cut or the coven from 1919. 
And um, I love the actress. Well, first of all, the actress that plays the, the Axe Man is played by Angelica H H uh, Huston's brother, Danny. Um, and then Meryl Streep's daughter actually plays the character in The Covenant said the line that I really like the best where she was basically, you know, telling them, look, we don't have to play jazz because everybody was like, oh, we need to play jazz. And she says, no, we don't. We do whatever we, you know, we want to do. And mm -hmm. she said, we embody our feminine might, intelligence with grace, strength with an iron will. No man can make us cower in that home. And I just, you know, I started spinning around and running around the room because I was like, <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, and so that's when the witches kind of lured him into the house because they weren't playing jazz. They were playing opera. Right. And so he went into their home and he saw her character that I think her name was Millie and she was reading tarot cards. And when she pulled the card of death, of course, he was like, you know, yes, I've come here to kill you. And she was like, no, you've come to die. Mm -hmm. And so that's when all the witches like went ham <laughs> and started that, stabbing that man to death. Yes, they yeah. did. <laughs> and it was if that was like an episode of Criminal Minds, that was definitely overkill. Like that was definitely a crime that just they went over because a few stabs would have killed him. They just I mean the first him. stab he had projectile blood coming out of his chest. So <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> right. I mean they all and they all jumped on him. They looked like a bunch of because they were wearing like all black or something. Yeah, so it looked they had like hoods. Like, like descending on him so it was a very awesome scene and um then we go back to the present day where we see Zoe um, going through a box that appears to be like Madison's things. It has like her sunglasses and a magazine with her on it. And she goes into a closet and she finds um, some storage space where she sees old pictures of kind of like, I, I think of them as like sorority lines, like pledge classes. <laughs> right, yeah. But Zoe, um, Zoe is an example of what happens when kids don't have enough activities because she shouldn't even have time. I mean, they should have some type of which curriculum? Right. She shouldn't have time to do all this willy nilly fuckery finding. Right. <laughs> She's going through and exploring. And I have, they had an actual, besides the gathering that we saw, have they actually had lessons? I yes. was just about to say, I mean, hmm. they allegedly are in school, but it's just like it's a boarding home, but not like a school. <laughs> But right. I mean, you know, but to be fair, their teacher is laid up in the hospital right now, so maybe school was off. We had yeah. zombies that tried to kill us, so maybe school was off for the zombies. Maybe Madison died, off. so maybe school was off for Madison's death. I mean, there's a whole <laughs> lot that's going down, so maybe there's no time for school. I guess. Uh, she finds, in, um, when she goes back to this storage space, she sees all the pictures and she realizes that the covens used to run deep in their numbers. Mm -hmm. And so they have definitely dwindled. And that's when she gathers Nan and Queenie. Um, and I was laughing at Nan because she was asking if, um, Zoe was asking if, she, if they recognized anything different. And Nan was like, yes, Luke is back at home with his mother. <laughs> 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 Nan has that laser like focus. She she's focused. Right. She is worried about her boo thing. <laughs> um, but then, you know, Zoe is trying to show some some leadership um ability. I'm not gonna comment on that just yet, but she's showing some leadership ability and she has them drink shots and you know, has them pledge to each other to watch each other's backs because what she's found in that closet is a spirit board. So Zoe wants to contact the spirits. Um, so wait, we're, we're going to ignore that she was planning a rush, that she was trying to get them hyped to plan a witch rush to get get their numbers up. I mean, that's what that's, that's what it sounds like. We're dwindling. We've right. got to stick together. We've got to. I don't know what she what the rest of the speech was, but I yeah. know I tweeted when y'all said that about the rich witch rush. I tweeted out dumb fi fi dumb fi dumb fi dumb oh, because. Man sorority seem like because you know she she started with this whole Ouija board thing one to contact spirits and this is my problem with Zoe she does she's impulsive and she doesn't think things through so she's you definitely have, impulsive so you have Queenie who warns her that these spirit boards have two purposes to contact, contact and release, and release. And she tells them, the, even the story about, I guess, her grandmother, where she released a spirit that burned down the house and left her with half her face. Right. That doesn't faze Zoe at all. Zoe's just like, we, you know, we need to find Madison or find, you know, whatever. She, um, too, has laser light focus. Yes, she does. Yes. <laughs> but, but it's on all the, all the things that could be detrimental to her actually continuing to breathe. Like... <laughs> 
you know, Nan is focused on that peen. Okay, as as best we know, that's no peen that's gonna kill her. <laughs> Idiot Zoas then messed around. Uh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I'm getting caught up. No, okay, so they do contact the spirit, um, and they think it's Maddie, so they ask her, or they ask the spirit, were they murdered? The spirit says yes. They ask who did it, the spirit says you did. Right. So they're like, uh-oh, and then, um, the, so then they ask, who are you? And the person spells out Axe Man. At that point, Gabby slaps the vodka. I know, that's right. She's like, yo, listen, this is some bullshit, we're not doing this. Right, and she points at Zoe and says, if survival is so important to you, you better find out who you're talking to. Well, amen. Now, that's the best piece of advice you could have given that girl, but we find out later on that Zoe don't give a damn about common sense. She's so, like, oh, X-Men. Well, then, because later on, she even goes to find out who it is and still feels like that yes, she's so determined. Like right, right. Yeah. Um, but let's get to Fiona and Michelle's yeah. comment because I, I do love this. So uh, Fiona's um, at the hospital getting chemo, and we find out that she can read, um, you know, other people's thoughts. And she sees a lady who just wants to hold on long enough to get her daughter down the aisle. Mm -hmm. um, she sees another woman with her husband, another man. Um, Anyway, she, the, she says, I think to the doctor, that her daughter needs her and that she's doing this and, and doing this for her daughter and not for herself. So I didn't know if, um, I didn't know if she had given up. I remembered in a previous episode that she had resigned herself to die. I think it was the episode where she and, and Maddie um, went out that she had, knew she had cancer and she had pretty much knew that she didn't have too long to live. So I don't mm -hmm. know if, if what happened to Delia gives her a new lease on life to kind of strengthen herself for her. What do y'all think about that? Um, well, I think she got a new lease on life when she thought she killed the Supreme. Exactly. And then I think she was got a new le lease on life when she realized, wait a minute, I didn't kill the Supreme. I still got some work to do. And then she got a third <laughs> new lease on life when she's like, my daughter needs me now. I'm doing it for her. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and Michelle brings up a good point going back to that spirit calling scene. They didn't actually call for Madison in the beginning. They were calling out anyone, which, again, mm -hmm. goes to the, the stupidity of, you know, this, this, this group led by Zoe that right. they really know what they're doing with their magic. Um, but going back to the hospital scene... That's why they need to have class. Right, they need to have some classes, right. <laughs> um, so Fiona's worrying if she's going to lose her hair. She also talks about she's not ready to go just yet, and she wants one more great love affair of her life and to belong to someone, which of course foreshadows what happens at the end. She wants... She, see, okay, a lot of what these women are doing is based on peen, okay? Right, that's back to what and, I was thinking that. Right, and, and right. now she's looking for her farewell to her peen, the, you know, last one she'll spin around on before death. Um, the Nan is, you know, chasing behind the boy next door. Uh, Zoe pulled together Frank and peen. And then there's the, the guy, what's his name, with the head? Uh, what's the Bastion. One? Bastion, <laughs> who is like part of the reason why the whole truce has ended like all of this stuff is peen based y'all peen based I so mean I, but it's all men writing it too but anyway that's a side true. comment well, except for Jennifer to say, what do y'all think about what it's saying that our greatest vulnerability is that pretty much at the end of the day we want a relationship like that's pretty much what this is you know saying that our, our forget all of our powerful you know whatever whatever at the end of the day our biggest weakness is love kind of. Is that because it's the male writing it or is that because that's what we've seen? I mean, you know? I think it's both. I mean, I think that a lot of people desire um, true love and or companionship, um, but I think that we're seeing some kinds of extremes of it. I mean, it's you know, like for instance, Misty wants true companionship Mm -hmm. You know, and we don't see it twisted from her perspective, um, yeah. you know, and but we we just kind of they just kind of this is what we talked about before. They never kind of write people um, with balance. It's very it's just a few characters that have balance 
or had balance, and even some of the more balanced ones seem to be losing balance around this same thing. But mm -hmm. you know, but I say I will say that the way that um, what's her name Fiona said that she wants a great love affair is different because you know what what we haven't seen is the fact that she was married previously. So we found that out at episode one. Hmm? Yeah, more than once, I think. Mm -hmm. And her last husband was the rich one. Yeah, you know, and so we don't know what her relationship was to those men, but she's, even though she talked about the dance and all of that, and as opposed to kind of flirtations, it's a different thing to say you want one last great love affair. You know, that's kind of a more vulnerable, open place, especially with the fact that she's sad right now about her daughter. So I don't know. I agree. I that bad. No, I do agree. I think that's different than what she's, I think she wants to feel, like how she says she wants to feel like she belongs to someone. I think she's she kind of saying that. that she wants that balance. You know, mm -hmm. she's a powerful woman, but she wants to be, she wants to, to be, you know, that, that yin and yang type deal. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't trust her. I don't trust her at all. I think she's, she's giving a lot of lip service. And I think that given the op if, if she had the opportunity to have a real actual relationship, she would be so obsessed with um, controlling it and you know getting what she needed out of it that she wouldn't be vulnerable. I but don't know if that's true though, because if you're dying, that's a that's just a different place from she was lit literally the supreme all this time for years, decades, forty of them, four decades. Right, but she has not she has not shown herself to be sincere in anything thus far. Like I don't even trust that she wants to stay alive for her daughter. I think that was something to say to gain um, sympathy, maybe, but I don't even think she wants to do that. She just wants to stay the supreme for as long as she possibly can. Well, we may have a chance to to test your theory, Miss Mark, because from what I understand, um, they're saying that the from the writer's perspective, um, what spoiler alert, basically, she and the Axe Man are going to become an item. So <laughs> we're going to see what you know, and that's going to be interesting too, because of course we know who the Axe Man is, but mm -hmm. she so he is blinded by her need for to belong to someone before right. she dies. Yeah. So, you know, are we going to see her be vulnerable? Are we going to see her be crafty? I mean, you know, we, we just don't know. Um, but Wait a minute, let me go back. Let me go back back to something about her wanting this last love. And <laughs> I think it was the first episode, well, the, whatever episode it was, that she killed Madison or she, well, well, she was in a bar and she was talking about how, you know, basically she had had all these men and they were yeah, all. The dances. Mm -hmm. Right. The dances. Mm -hmm. I think that is what she's looking for, the dance, not the real emotional connectedness just the dance to prove that she still got it ah because her self esteem I is don't so think so I don't think so <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good okay that, I don't think so I, she's been crying and ravaged and she's popping these pills and she knows she's dying she's taking chemo she cried when the man showed her how to do the um, the face surgery she can't even get the face surgery because she's I just think I don't think that's the same person but I mean, I, and th this is why you will not roll with us in a zombie apocalypse. That's <laughs> fine. I don't y'all, but I think that that's a good point on both ends because all of those things happening to her have damaged her self-esteem. So part of that could be that she appears to be more vulnerable because the dance is not working for her anymore. But what happens when the dance does work? Mm -hmm. Does she change back into that old Fiona who is you know, the manipulative, you know, whatever, whatever. So that does remain to be seen. We will be able to test that theory. Um, and, and she was having the conversation with the doctor about all of this. And this is why I was laughing when y'all did point out the, the comment that Michelle put in the chat. She asked if we picked up on the eHarmony product placement advertisement. And it, yeah, I did. And I laughed because the doctor was like, well, my mother found someone on eHarmony and they vacationed in Nova Scotia. You know, <laughs> so... <laughs> That was hilarious, um, you know, when they said that. But I, I am curious to see how Fiona is going to, do we see a new Fiona? Are we seeing Fiona develop into something different, or is she the same old Fiona? I see Miss Smart's face, so I know where she lies on it. No, I just feel like all these little, these little glimpses of softness are just chinks in her overall armor that she, you know, that, that were exposed at various points, but that doesn't change the core of who she is. You don't think but, that? But I, I, think I don't that think we so. Don't know the core of who she is. I think we know the core of who she became. 
But I I don't know if we know we don't know enough about her backstory. We don't know about yeah. But her core her did. core her core killed the other supreme. That happened when she was young. So she's been pretty treacherous for a very long time. This isn't something that just happened because she got cancer or because she got got old. She's yeah. been a power hungry bitch for a long time. And Michelle, I don't think that means you can't you can't want love. So. And Which the chat, like, love is the greatest power in the world, so I'm never going to kind of sway from that. So yeah. Well, Miss uh, Michelle in the chat says she agrees with Miss Marcus. She said that she's never expressed a need for a man before. That right. she thinks that she wants to be wanted, desirable, sexy, but not that she wants a meaningful relationship. So again, this is going to be interesting to see how the next couple of episodes play out because the Axe Man is going to be her love interest at least for next episode. So we'll see how Fiona handles that. Um, so we go back to the school and the girls are researching the Axe Man on the internet, which is what I did today, and I found some YouTube clips and Wikipedia stuff, um, <laughs> you know, all about him. Um, and, you know, the true story says that he he actually had several victims to actually survive, mm -hmm. which I couldn't understand because they really couldn't identify him. At one point, there was a black man who was accused of the crime, and then somebody described him as mulatto. He was uh, attacking mostly Italians, so at some point it was this racial thing. So anyway, um, but the girls found out that he killed eight people. He was never caught, and he mostly only killed women, and then the men he, he killed, they weren't protecting the women. So we don't know his mm -hmm. motives. Um, you know, but that was a little bit of background about the Axe Man. Uh, they find the picture of the class of 1919, the year that the Axe Man disappeared. Um, Zoe starts talking big shit, of course. She wants to release the Axe Man. She has no thought. She just wants to release a serial killer out into the universe. Okay. Um, and so she goes off on her own and decides to get the spirit board and promises to release him if he tells her or if he helps her basically contact Madison. So the Axe Man tells her that she's Madison is in the attic, um, and then she just goes and doesn't fulfill that promise to the Axe Man. <laughs> um, then she goes up into the attic, and you said something, Miss. you tweeted something, Miss Smart, about what was going on in that house that they weren't able to smell a decaying body. And they have a maid. Like, what kind of maid do you have that you can't smell, like I can smell if my neighbor didn't take their chicken container out last night. So maybe my sense of smell is really crazy, but that's a dead body, like, you know. <laughs> uh, I was listening to another podcast last night, and they said that, <laughs> they pointed out that, that, that Spalding was also burning incense in his room, and that the smell of incense is so horrible sometimes. <laughs> Some incense really does suck. That's true. That's true. So, <laughs> yeah. People could have just written off Spalding's room a long time ago. <laughs> but that is, I don't think that's his room because, I don't think that's his room though because she had to like do a, a hook or something to get up there. Like that's it wasn't easy to get up there. It's his tea party place. This is, I don't know if that's his bed chambers where he sleeps, but you know, that's his little place where he has his little dog. <laughs> but she oh, finds goodness, Madison. Goodness. Madison's all, you know, rot it out, and then Spalding's behind her. Um, so then oh, we. Oh, gross. Yeah, but we get to the scene where um, Cordelia is back home, and she's come upstairs and she's re entering her room. Um, Fiona's already in there, and Hank comes up behind her. Um, what did you guys think when you first saw, saw Cordelia enter the room? Like, did you guys have any thoughts about her appearance? Um, I didn't. She looked hunched over. Maybe look, she looked old, I guess. But I didn't really think about it. Like, that's just my impression now that you just asked the question. But, no. I, I watched it twice, um, and what I noticed when she walked back in that room, and also a comment that Hank said, because Hank said that she made it up the stairs with no help. Mm -hmm. She did look older, but she also looked, of course she's blind, so she's vulnerable, but she looked more confident in her entrance 
in her blindness than she did when she wasn't blind. I don't know if it was the balled up anger with Hank or her determination to try to do, you know, put up a big front or whatever, but she looked very confident when she walked in. And then, of course, the other thing she started doing, she immediately started chastising them for having roses in the room because that was love and romance. Yeah. And she's she, like, I don't need that. I need chrysanthemums. I need strength. I need protection. Right. She was yeah. very like, bop, 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 bop. She was not the Cordelia that seemed kind of hesitant and and nice and, you know. But you what, know, that Cordelia has shown herself. When she was with her mom before, when we first realized that Fiona was her mom, she was cussing her out. Why don't you hurry up and die? I mean, that person was our, we've seen that person before. She right, wasn't shy or quiet. Because she's with two people that she knows have betrayed her. She was her hard self. Is that what you think? I mean, I think that what, we're still waiting on the backstory as to why she's afraid to or has been afraid to show her power as a witch. But she's not afraid to show her anger as a daughter or and now as a wife. So right. we, we, we've seen that. Because Hank touches her arm, and she, of course, again, flashbacks to him, um, you know, having sex, and she asks him who the redhead is. And, Miss mm -hmm. Smart, you had asked last night when we were talking after the show, like, why didn't she know? And I guess we kind of skip ahead. Why didn't she know who the redhead was? Right. Because it wasn't like the redhead was some chick that checked her out down at the Piggly Wiggly. This was somebody that she had, based on the information we get toward the end, that she had sought out, had engaged mm -hmm. in conversation with, had this young lady in her house, and for whatever reason, when the flashback, when she gets that scene of her husband uh, screwing this person, she doesn't have any idea who this is. And, and the thing is, redheads aren't that common. So <laughs> I doubt that she has a cadre of redheads to choose from. Well, I, the way, when I looked at it again, the way that they filmed her vision, yeah, very cloudy. Like it was yeah. almost. And I said this when we were having the when we were talking among ourselves last night that I guess in that that emotional flashback she was so focused on him betraying her that she wasn't focused on who he was betraying her with because when they showed it in the it was film mostly him. Yeah, you, you could see her hair, but you really couldn't identify her face. So I don't know if that was intentional to show her vision or what. But um, she yells out, enough bullshit. I had to go blind to see things about you that I couldn't see before. And then she says that um, this is just a bad cosmic joke because she has a different kind of clarity, an absolute clarity that she's never had and that the images she has vibrate with light. Um, Overriding that particular speech. <laughs> it was a little too much, a little too over the top, a little too extra. You didn't feel like she was giving us everything. I felt like, okay, we're not slow. We all got that last week. You can say one sentence to keep it moving, but all that extra, it's more clarity. I've never, I mean, it was just too much. It was overriding. When yep. she could have said, I see you for the low down, dirty MF, you are, get the fuck Amen. out of my house. Or just called him Jughead like Fiona did and told him to get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she does tell him, and I think this is going to, I think this is going to come back, um, come back uh, with a little foreshadowing. He will be accountable for every single betrayal, no matter how deep he thinks his secrets are buried. Because we find out that it's not just a betrayal, but he does have some pretty deep secrets buried so he's going to pay for that um, well, and that's the thing and I know we'll talk about it when we get to it but the last two episodes I kept saying well well what's this deal why is he around that he's you know uh, Miss Smart said we know he's crazy because he knows he's cheating on his wife who's a witch and we were just like why does he want to have a baby with a woman that he knows is a witch and why is he you know so reckless and ruthless and killing people mm -hmm. like I knew it had to be something Mm -hmm. I didn't know this was the something, but I knew it was something dark. Anyway, well, I have a whole bunch of questions when we get to that moment. But Fiona, okay. Fiona calls him a jughead, tells him to get out, and then <laughs> she tries to comfort um, Cordelia. And when she touches her, Cordelia sees that Myrtle was burned at the stake, and she called her Auntie Myrtle, which um, I said I said last week when she, when we realized she had visions or whatever that she was going to touch her mother and learn what her mother's what mother's done. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's you know we know that she's gonna find out all the other stuff next week, but I thought it was interesting how she called her auntie Myrtle because it was she really truly grieved in that moment, even though she she took up for Fiona last episode, she grieved almost like she was closer to Myrtle than she was Fiona. I can't see her crying or grieving like that if Fiona had burned at the stake. I think you know it. 
I don't know if maybe Myrtle helped raise her. I don't know, you know, what that deal was, but there was some genuine affection there. Um, when she well, and plus Fiona has been gone for a lot, for years. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was the big complaint that where have you been all this time? And she was like, "Is my complaint that I left, or my complaint is your complaint that I came back?" So maybe that was you know, maybe part of that was during her formative years, and maybe that'll explain why she's. Go ahead. I don't know what okay. happened with her, but okay, she's still safe in here. maybe um, that'll explain why. Um, now I, I completely lost my train of thought. Now, um, at any rate, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's gone, but yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, Auntie Myrtle—that's what she was talking about. I don't know. It's gone. Yeah, I I feel like there was some scenes where Myrtle did say something about Fiona having left her daughter with her or something. So, oh yeah, maybe it's. I know what I was gonna say. Maybe that'll explain why um, Fiona has so much regret and keeps talking about what a bad mother she was. Maybe because she left her. Myrtle says she was like a daughter to her. That's what Michelle said. So here's my question. Comment. So I mean, I don't know where we are.
All right. I think we're live again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it kind of kicked us off um, our original post. So hopefully, I know we had Michelle and one other person that it typed some comments in. So I hope you guys can see this new post. Michelle, if you're watching, please come over here. Uh, <laughs> Wait, um, how can she be watching and t you tell her to come over here? She can't be watching. You can't stop, have both ways. Stop, look, stop. Just stop. Uh, Y'all go ahead and talk about that scene. I'm going to try to rebroadcast the YouTube on our site. Okay. Do you remember the last thing you heard? Because I'm not sure when it dropped off. It was uh, Fiona and um, Myrtle and Cordelia's relationship. Oh, yeah, so we started talking about that a little bit, and I was saying that I think that um, potentially that's why um, Fiona felt so badly or has all this remorse about being such a terrible mother that maybe it's because she left, left to do what? I don't know, besides get more power or, you know, dance with all these men or marry all these men. Like, I don't know enough of her backstory, but maybe Myrtle took care of Cordelia while... Fiona was off being the supreme. Uh, by the way, it looks like it's saying the Q&A is disabled. This feature is disabled. Oh. So I don't know if you guys, if you click on Q&A, can see it. Um, yeah, I think Fiona was off be, being Fiona, like doing her own thing. Like, I mm -hmm. think she had a child, but she didn't want to parent. And yep. I think that's where her guilt comes from. Yep. Okay. I could definitely see that. And you guys are right. I had to enable the Q&A before we went live, so I can't enable it now. No. <laughs> but what I can see is if somebody does a comment, like, underneath, um, then I can see it then. So hopefully, you know, if we have some comments, we can see it then. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we are on the scene now where the girls are torturing Spalding up in the attic with the spatula and the hot plate. I really um, couldn't believe that they went there, honestly. Why? What, what? You didn't think that it was in their nature, or in their character? Or? Yeah, like, I was just like, I mean, I tweeted about it. I was like, wait, Zoe's in the torture? And then Queenie, I mean, we know Queenie is like, will okay. mistreat someone who treats her poorly, but that mm -hmm. was just kind of strange that she was, I mean, he wasn't doing anything to her. She was just like, you know, making it, it was funny to her to be really cool. mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Queenie. she... She, I, at first I was like, well, maybe they are in it because he killed Madison, or they thought he killed Madison. But then uh, Queenie seemed to enjoy it way too much. Yeah. Like, laughing. Mm -hmm. You know, but she kind of laughed. Remember when she and, and Madison used to get into it? She used to giggle a little bit then, you know. So yeah, I, but they were getting into it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was, yeah. she had no control over her anger, and but neither of them did. did. But that's different from... What do you know? Let me burn, you know, the shit out of your face to the point that you passed out. Yeah, it was it was kind of creepy and just just kind of I don't know the scene, the whole scene. Um, it it was actually funny because they were asking him questions, but of course he doesn't have a tongue, so he can't talk, but he can think and then Nan mm -hmm. can his thoughts. So they were asking him questions, and he was being very dramatic and over the top. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, but I really couldn't believe Nan was falling for her, honestly, because he even, even his actor voice made it sound like he was writing a romance novel. <laughs> like, well, and it was, you know, I slid it, whatever he said, it was just like so. In her dramatic. pulsating mound. That's what right, but yeah. right, because, but you know what, you know, Lady Buddha, that falls in line with when Cordelia gave her little uh, soliloquy or whatever. Um, when she came, when she was talking to her husband, whoever no. wrote this, yeah, figured like they were just gonna go, you know, weave a, a tapestry of flowery language whenever they could. I guess, but look, but even him, even the way he kind of like threw his chin out and even he made his voice sound like this. Like it was just so extra that like he was trying to romance Nan in the telling of the story. So she would believe it, I guess. And she did. So anyway. Which no. kind of annoyed me because I feel like Nan is the smartest one in this whole crew. Yes. And I, I like that she she did uh, translate what he was saying, but she never even questioned that he wasn't telling the truth. Or whether, whether or not she was telling the truth. She did it. And I was like, there's no gut check. There's no nothing. You're just just because you can hear his thoughts, you then say that those must be his actual thoughts as opposed to just 
what he's thinking to share with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was funny because he plays the character or played the character Russell Edgington in True Blood, and he, he pulled from that whole gothic, his character there, his voice and mannerisms and all of that, the overacting, that's what he was, he was Russell Edgington in that whole scene. So oh. I, I think him overacting too caused, causes Joey to, I mean, Zoe to be suspicious because then she says, well, he's been around Fiona so long and lives in a witch house that, you know, he may have picked up on you know some things of his own so and he basically punked him in that in that punk punked them in that whole moment saying well what are you going to do you know right if i killed her you still can't do anything about it you're going to tell the police i mean right you know so um and we do have Michelle back uh, we just spoke to her in our um in our comment section on our Google Plus page because oh. we see Q&A so hey Michelle yeah. um because we don't have Q&A, we'll just have to, you know, just kind of correspond via the, the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but um, going to the next scene, they are back in the bayou um, with Misty Day, who mm -hmm. is bordering Myrtle's grave. And Miss Smart, I'm going to let you take it from here. <laughs> okay, see, listen, we have a solid few years of rules on this extraterrestrial, I don't know what, like under dark world type of situation. Watering, yeah. a person being buried is how you make zombies. They're right up the street from Bon Tom, and they're going to sit there and act like we don't know that these are established rules. They've already played us with the zombies. Now they're trying to play us with this whole, I'm going to bury you like you're a vampire and bring you alive. I'm not buying it. they got to come up with something new to reanimate a body. I'm not buying this, let me plant you in the ground bullshit. Well, like, but here's really the thing. I, she's already animated. Like, at, that, at the end of the previous episode, Misty did her resurgence and brought Myrtle back to life, and you saw her eyes. But I think this is the, the equivalent of her having to put all that swamp mud on Frankenpeen. I don't to like it. Him. I Still think that like she it. just, and she said, feel this mud or whatever she said. She kind of said that that's basically what she was doing. Um, yeah. And you saw her wiggling, you know. Mm -hmm. She should have blessed some water and made her take a sponge bath in that water. That would have been okay. <laughs> because we don't have any dark body world. Shirt. Okay. I, I mean, let's, they, they're doing all sorts of other. They're bringing Frankenpeen back. So you mean yeah. to tell me they couldn't just say, you know, girl, go ahead and take that sponge bath. We're going to pull this all together. No. <laughs> well, they took the they zombie have, route. This show brought, uh, can we talk about Madison now? Wait, 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 because we got to talk about the fact that Frank and Pin kind of stumbled back in. I was um, so pissed. I was so pissed. was traumatized and stinky. Um, so, you know, Misty Day says, come on, you need a bath. And so when she's bathing him, she took him back to her lair. She's playing Stevie Nicks, leather and lace, you know, um, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, he starts basically having PTSD. Yeah. Like, he flashes back to the <gasps> back scene with his mom, and he <laughs> and he Hulk smashes her entire place, <laughs> and then takes her eight track of um Stevie Nicks and like slams it, like yeah, not Stevie, not Stevie, no, you kill Stevie, Miss Smart. Why are you looking like that? <laughs> because I just feel like this whole storyline is so freaking ridiculous, especially once we see Madison pop up, reborn. And she's speaking in full sentences. Like you can't have it both ways. Or was he just that dumb to begin with? Like what is the what is the rationale for why he couldn't put sentences together? And I assure you that woman who was burned at the stake, she will put sentences together. She uh, will because and, Misty has the gift of resurgence, and oh, they no. are doing some old crazy spell making. But but it to be to in Kyle's defense, he was ahead. He was just a head with like a whole That's bunch what a brain is. That's why he should be able to talk. But he still got a whole bunch of He got everybody else connected to him. Yeah, he got his penis acting like his how his penis wasn't acting before. He's rapey in the his heart. I mean, he you know, he's not he's you know yeah. You're making excuses. You're making excuses. I, I like Frank and hit it. I I'm I'm I like Wait, Frank whoa, 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 what? I like Frank and Pain because what happened to him is not his fault. It's your fucking girl Zoe's fault, which is why I, I am. No, 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 no. It's Madison's fault because mm -hmm. it was her idea to build him in the first place, and she had the spell mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. It all okay. comes to Zoe's fault. It's, it's all Zoe's fault. It's but, Madison, uh, and she was like, "I'll build you. You know, I'll 
something, whatever, with, with your boy Candy. But anyway. Mm -hmm. But Zoe comes in after he Hulk smashes the place, and he runs <laughs> to her like a little baby puppy, like, Ugh, and holds on to her. And so she tells um, she tells uh, Misty that she needs both of them to come with her. And we see this brief flash of Hank showing up at Madame Laveau's house, but then they flip back to um, Zoe with Misty. She's chained up Kyle mm -hmm. as Madison, and she <laughs> wants Misty to use her power of resurgence on Madison. So Misty at first says she's too rotted, like she has too much death inside she's her. like, I can build you, we can dig you a, a hole. Right, we can dig you a grave, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then she help, tells her to help her, um, and she starts pushing the death out of her, which ended up being oh. blood and a cockroach. I have a phobia of roaches. Why did you tell me what it was? I just saw something. I didn't know I what didn't it was. I didn't see a roach, but thank you. Thank you very much. No. Oh, yeah. thanks, Look. Soja. Thanks. <laughs> Look, <laughs> that scene almost took me to the upper room. Um, but, yeah, so that, so that came out of her mouth. Um, but then she pops up and immediately asks for a cigarette. So we got our Madison back, or, you know, kind of, sort of. Um, then we go to the scene. <laughs> then we go to the scene where Hank is at Madame Laveau's house, Marie Laveau, and he thinks that she's mm -hmm. behind back on Delia. But, but she's like, look, if she said, first of all, do I look like the Taliban to you? And then she was like, if I wanted to blind her, I wouldn't have to leave my room. I mean, she <laughs> she pretty much, uh, well, you know. Well, this is what I mean about how she normally would do elegant things and why the zombies just didn't fit. Didn't fit her character, didn't fit yeah, her. Yeah, because that's why I was so crass. So it makes sense that she also wouldn't, that she wouldn't, you know, splash acid because that is kind of crass based on some of the things that we thought, at least that I thought that we knew about her. But the zombies, again, I'll say the zombies fit in the context of zombies that are hot right now on television. That is, that's the only reason I could see her having to use zombies. Because like, like she said, you know, her, her, her witchcraft and potions are beyond the dirty and disgusting and inconvenient. Like, she's, She's pretty solid in what she does. She doesn't need all those histrionics and stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, she's still alive and well right. and gorgeous 200 years later. Thank okay. you. Well, what we find out is that um, Hank is revealed to be a witch hunter that she hired six years ago. Um, and that she wants more than just the Academy of Witches. She wants all the descendants of Salem. Now, I know that we said that the truce you know, they, that, that the truce is why she's upset and them killing Bastion. But I wondered if it was a tie back because, you know, we talk about the Crucible and the Salem witch hunts and how, you know, she was supposedly the one that was blamed for teaching all those white girls, you know, the during the Salem witch trials, witchcraft. I wonder if they're going to do a tie back to them betraying her, like those girls betraying her during the Salem witch trials, and that's why she wants all of them dead. What do y'all think about my theory there? I think that that is very possible, and in that tieback, I think there's going to come a point where, because I, I still think she and Queenie are related, where Queenie's going to have to make a choice between her and these stupid girls she shares this house with, this boarding house, because it's not a school. Um... <laughs> It's but yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think that I think that is all gonna gonna come back up as one of the root reasons that she has it in for these girls, aside from Bastion, of course. Wait, yeah. so go ahead. No, I was gonna say I do think Queenie is related to her because they, well, they are related. They're both descendants of Tachuk. Yeah, they are related. So, yeah. related. so this is my thing though, because I always have this question as to the limits of people's power. I do not understand why, if she is so powerful, and I believe she is, why she got to hire a fucking witch hunter? Same reason I have time to clean up my house, but we'll hire a maid. Outsource. She's a job creator. <laughs> I mean, but all she's doing is hair and playing solitaire on her iPad, and then she's mad at him for not doing a good job. Do you, you know keep how your long job for takes, six years? But I, and, I think that maybe she likes the the hunt, the dance, kind of like Fiona. Like, it's attractive to her to see him, him 
make people suffer. Like she wants these descendants, but he he's coming in and he's wooing these girls and he's ingrained in Delia's life, you know, finding yeah. out her secret. So maybe she likes that aspect of it. And that's probably why she got mad at him. Well, first of all, just to give the details, he found nine descendants in three years. Five yeah. of them, including Kaylee, that's the redhead that he killed, mm -hmm. from Delia's research. Mm -hmm. uh, but Marie said, you got hard and went soft. And she was pissed about that. Mm -hmm. well, maybe she hired him to trick him or ingrain, ingrain himself in the family, and now he's flipping, and she's mad about that. So, you know, I she, guess. I mean, she but, could do a spell and kill everybody, but that's no fun. Well, I still, I still want to know how he got involved with her. Like, what is the process? You put an ad out in the paper, you're like looking for a witch hunter, or you just are walking down the street, and you're like, oh, you look like you could be a good witch hunter. Like, what happens? Well, I imagine but, it's the same. It's the same way that somebody can find drugs. Like, you know, like there has to be some type of underground network of people who I don't know, maybe a city paper, some ads in the back, or something that like a witch newspaper or underground witch ra railroad that he puts his service out on, out on, I don't, maybe he's like the hitch, and it's all word of mouth. You know, Joe, we have Joe in the comments that says she does not want to start a war, so. Ah, good point. Good point, because I was thinking about when when we had um, Madame LaLaurie, and they all came to her house with the, the girls, she had kind of sort of an army with her, but I don't think that any of them practiced. Um, I think they were just people from the community, so maybe she does not have as many people as they do, so maybe that's why she doesn't want to openly attack. So that is a very good point. Um, so, but she, you know, she calls for all of their heads. She said, I want uh, <laughs> Fiona, I want Cordelia, and I want every last, mm -hmm. you know, witch in that coven. So, mm -hmm. she, you know, she's going to go to war some kind of way. Um, then we go back to Misty raiding the fridge. Um, Zoe asked for her to stay and kind of like tries to guilt trip her in saying, I thought you were looking for your tribe. And Zoe, ba I mean, Misty says basically y'all ain't it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, she's like, it's foul in here. Yeah. When somebody is living in a shanty in the middle of nowhere, you offer them <laughs> hospitality and they're like, Babe, no, I'm just going to go ahead back to this shanty. I'm going to just go back. I don't even got my music no more. I'm going to go back. Right. She doesn't even have Stevie Nicks anymore. She was like, I would rather go back to my silent room in the swamp than be here. <laughs> than be here are. with this foul shit that y'all got going on. I don't even know what it is. Right. It's so foul. I can't even name that shit. Right. I'm taking my ass back to the swamp, bitches. Right. No. <laughs> right. So then we see Cordelia in her room and she's preparing herself for the night. And she does look very vulnerable. She's by herself. She's trying to take her meds. Her pills fall on the ground. Um, and she's in the room and we see X Man is in some sort of limbo. Like he is mm -hmm. now he has a form, but he's not quite free. And he says that he's always hated that room. So the, her bedroom is the room he was killed in. And he gives mm -hmm. this little each about hearing music and being trapped in this room. Anyway, um, so then they go back to Maddie. And Maddie is semi-confused. She knows who she is, but she she doesn't know how she died. She can't tell them anything. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to ignore when the Axe Man called Cordelia Dirty Pussycat? Because I felt like... Oh, that wait. Was... We got to that part. Oh, we have... Okay, okay, okay. 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 Flip scenes a little okay. bit. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so she starts still vomiting up a little bit of death. So... Um, they kind of ask her questions. She didn't know that she was dead. And then they ask her, did you see anything on the other side? She said no. So, you know, she's still sort of confused. Now, yeah, she said it was black. There's nothing, yeah. which I don't believe. But anyway. Well somebody, well, somebody said that is Ryan Murphy's thing. He's, I think he's an atheist. So he always kind of gives mm. the religious, like, push, pish posh in every one of his um, horror stories. I see. Okay. So that was kind of put there intentionally. That's what people are saying. Yeah. Um, so now we go back to the scene, Miss Smart. What does uh X Man tell her? <laughs> tell Cordy. What does he um he calls her a dirty pussycat. I don't even know the context. All I know is I felt like <laughs> that was awesome and I was gonna add that to shit I say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was mad because he's trapped between worlds. He was like Zoe tricked him and so he 
takes out his axe and says he's going to get out one way or another and to call those mm -hmm. girls back up there so he can get out. Um, so Delia screams. The girls run upstairs. The jazz music is playing. The door is locked. And why can't Queenie bust the door down? Why I can't nobody do uh, one of these spells to open the damn door? Right. So they, I guess it's more dramatic. On my brain, I guess, because they can unlock all them damn doors. Well, they had to, you know, they had to have a dramatic scene where they run downstairs and they had to have the axe swinging so Zoe could be, you know, uh, going to the bookshelf and spinning her fingers and finding the book and finding the spell. And this again goes back to, I know that Zoe is probably going to be the supreme. I get that. But this is why I hate her. Because this, again, is Zoe's fault. Your teacher is locked in a room with an axe murderer, and you're so nonchalant about that when this is your fault. This is why he's in there about to kill her. She gives, she has no remorse. Does she have no remorse, or is she trying to be focused in the moment and, and get, get him to move on? on? She's trying to kill Kyle. Remember, she has no remorse for, for what she did with Kyle. Now she's just trying to put rat poison and, you know, whatever. She well, she tried for a second, and then he... And then he disappeared, and I forgot the fact that he disappeared, and now he showed back up, and now she's all, come on, you know, with him. She's, yeah, no, she's just like, stay right there, and then the girl, remember Misty said y'all could be a couple, and she's like, he killed his mom. I mean, she's just, I can't stand her. But anyway, we're almost at the end of the show. Um, So she yeah. finds the, the book, she does the spell. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the notes I said is that her supernatural instincts are always dead on, like her being your nature, finding the spell. It's just her human instincts and impulsivity are wrong, and that makes her kind of right. dangerous. Right, makes her very dangerous. Um, right. So her spell releases the axe man, and he, you know, kind of walks out of the room, and they rush up to, you know, comfort Cordelia. He walks out onto the street, and a hoopty drives by playing 50 Cent. Um, and I was hoping that he died in a drive-by. Like, I was hoping that, you know, something, you know, out of the ordinary would happen. But right. he just ends up walking down the street, and he makes his way to the bar where Fiona is sitting and starts chatting her up. She, oh, she noticed that her hair, her hair started to shed. Um, and the first thing he says to her is, hey, pretty lady, which... Okay. But he knew who she was. I think he, he and I think Michelle said this in the that. other thing, that he sought her out. Mm-hmm. So he he knew he knows who she is, which again mm -hmm. make that relationship kind of interesting. Um, but Fiona fell for the southern charm. I mean, you know that southern charm plus the fact that he commented on her beauty um, and asked her what she was drinking. So that's how the scene ended. So of course we know next week we'll find out more about her and the X Men. We know that um, they're gonna Cordelia is gonna find out that her mom, you know, killed Madison. Um, what else do you? Oh, we know that. Madame Laveau is going to ask Queenie what took you so long to come over here. Mm -hmm. So any other predictions that you guys think? Um, my prediction is that somebody is going to do something to that, that, that chick who lives in the swamp and Kyle is going to Kirk out and rescue her doing his arm <laughs> flailing and yelling. <laughs> bit. Um, because they won't stop showing him, even though I've asked nicely to keep showing him. I like Kyle. I want him to be back back in his nature. Um, I don't know. We might find out more about some of this. I don't know if we're going to see all that next week. Um, I think that we're going to see backstory about a few different things next week. Because um, now we keep having all... Now we have gaps to fill in about things that we don't know. So I think they're going to go backwards a little bit and fill in some of that. Well, also, the real live Stevie Nicks is supposed to be making an appearance on the show, so I don't know if she, if um, <coughs> Misty Day will use the power of resurgence on her 8-track and actually bring her life, <laughs> or, you know, if, if she'll be a part of a coven that she finds. I don't know, but, you know, I do look forward to seeing her make an appearance on the show. So um, that's it for this week, y'all. Um, well, I just wanted to, um, Michelle actually just said, Queenie oh. Tech. Because there was a discussion, well, not a discussion, but an exchange on whether or not that um, Queenie was a really a real witch. Like, why uh, Michelle asked, why is Queenie um, a part of the coven? She's not a real witch. Ashley was like, no, I don't think I think she no, as in she agrees with Michelle. And I said, yeah, she is, according to Cordelia, because remember, Cordelia sort of recruit recruited people for the house and then Joe Dubois said because she does um oh that I'm sorry that was about um what's Angela Bassett's character. 
Yeah, but, um, he, but you know what, though? A, hold on. Joe made another good point about knowing Fiona. He says, remember, the Axe Man has been in the house for 100 years, so he should already know everyone's secrets, even Fiona. So that's another. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, technically, um, Queenie is a voodoo priestess descendant, so she's not necessarily a witch in the... Well, this is what I was going to say, because Madame Laveau said with her own mouth, she done messed with the wrong witch, and she was for referring to herself. So even though sometimes she uses the word uh, ah. witch um, in a derogatory way, she also has said it about herself. So it, it starts to be a little blurry about what that line of what is the definition of a witch. And mm -hmm. so I don't know whether that's one of those careless things when you get when multiple people write episodes or whether that's on purpose. But that's something that I noticed that she said because we had already been pondering the differences between the two. So but, however she identifies, which is as a witch sometimes, then Queenie is the same. The other thing too I wonder about is if she, if Queenie is a voodoo priestess and not a witch or, or if she is a witch or whatever, why did, um, why did Cordelia recruit her? Like was there I think she was a witch because voodoo is a practice. So, so but, but did Cordelia recruit her? Did she not know the history of I think she did. I think she like purposely she recruited her. Yeah, I'm wondering if that was a purposeful recruitment that she did. Um, so we have a lot of questions that we need to have answered uh, in the next. <laughs> we still need a voodoo expert. I mean, because yes, voodoo is a practice do. that you learn. It's not something that is a magical powers that are passed to you. That's what I'm saying. That's different. Yeah, uh, we, we did ask for that on the last episode, if anyone yeah. knows anybody. Um, if you do, you can go to our website. It's www.whiskeywineandmoonshine.com, and you can hit us up in the Contact Us tab. Or if you're on Twitter, you can tweet us. Our um, show Twitter is at Whiskey Wine Moon. Mm -hmm. We also have our individual Twitters, which are, you know, underneath our um, our images if you guys want to go ahead and give them your Twitter handles for those who are listening. I'm at ND Collier C-O-L-L-I-E-R that's my Twitter handle and I am at um, at think underscore P is in Paul underscore smart and you certainly can uh, tweet me at your leisure and um, you also uh, Soda did you tell them they can join us normally on Tuesdays I hadn't got to that part oh, yet. Okay. Go ahead we'll go. And tell them. Oh, um, I was just going to say you guys can join us for our regular podcast, which is um, normally Tuesdays at 8 o'clock, where we talk about a cornucopia of topics. Um, never the same thing twice. We do have some recurring themes, but, um, and on Tuesdays we drink too, so that's important to note. <laughs> on Wednesdays we wear black, on Tuesdays we drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, um, I, and I am at Sojo, S-O-J-O, X-O-X-O, -X -O, and we will hopefully see you guys on our regular show on Tuesday or catch us on Thursdays for our American Horror Story wrap-up. See you guys later. Good night. Good night. Bye.